In part two, I'll be using activity photo case studies to demo technical editing tips using Canva. So our first case study that I wanted to, to show you was actually the activity that I was taking photos of. Um, and this is to basically understand how to build that visual story. I'm gonna use all photography. So in this case, you know, I've kept in mind the tips for taking the photos, and so I won't need to edit them later. Um, so my basic guidelines for visual storytelling are, first of all, we wanna answer the questions of what, how, who, and where. Um, you know, typically when you invite somebody to a party, there's also a when, but obviously on Activity Hero, we, um, we already display the when, um, you know, in our activity details and our session boxes. So um, really when you're telling your visual story for your activity on Activity Hero, we want you to answer what, how, who, and where through your photos. Um, the second is to stay consistent. Um, you know, whether that be through your usage of color or, you know, the style of your photos, um, you know, you want to create something that, that looks like it belongs together. Third is, um, you know, to help you stay consistent, uh, you want to build a formula that works for you. And I'll show you that as we walk through um, this, these case studies. Um, but then, above all, um, we want you to keep it simple. And I think this is something that as a creative myself, I get very carried away with wanting to decorate photos and make things, you know, beautiful in, in many different ways. But, but honestly, um, you know, simple is, can be great and simple is wonderful. And, and that's what um, I think will really resonate. Uh, it will help you save time and it will help your messaging through your visual storytelling be more impactful if you just keep it simple. So in my first case study, uh, which is my activity, um, here I am, I'm answering the questions of what, how, who, and where through my photos. Um, for what, I have a photo of my finished product. Um, and as you see, this is uh, you know, my little crafts that I had on top of my box in my backyard. This can be done anywhere. Um, the how is, you know, usually subject materials or screenshots. So, you know, content that you are going to share during your activity is something that, that parents usually like to see um, that might get kids excited. Uh, my example here is a coloring sheet of my activity. Um, and I wanted to take a photo of it because, you know, I'm already taking photos. I don't want to have to edit anything later. Um, so this was an easy setup. This is, I just found my well-lit area and I put a couple of things beside my coloring sheet to give it context. Um, and then I took my photo from up top. Um, and as you see, it doesn't have to be perfectly squared off. I was able to kind of, you know, frame it with a couple other pieces of paper and some crayons, but um, you know you can get this indication that there is you know this um, this worksheet that is also going to come along with the activity. Uh, the who, uh, which is kids, but you could also feature yourself if you or your teachers. Um, you know I think that it is you know very useful for parents to not only see you know participants in the activity, but also who is teaching the activity, so they have you know, um, an indication of what to expect of, of who they're going to see on screen or who they're going to meet at the park for an in-person. Um, and then answering where, um, usually it's a setup. Um, so to give you more context of, you know, where this little girl is, I've zoomed out a little bit. Um, so you can see she's at a table. She might be at an art studio. Um, and, and there are some other kids to give you this, this sense of, you know, this, this doesn't have to be um, a solo activity. This is probably a group activity that a lot of small kids do together. But all in all, when we look at these photos as a collection for a single activity, we can get a notion without reading the description of what the kids are going to be doing. Um, and that's really the goal of how we want to tell stories um, through our photos or images when we upload our activities. Um, 
So using these photos, I will show you how to reference, um, you know, the story in uh, the overview. So the overview is typically, you know, what you enter um, below the, the first activity um, photo on our activity page. Here I'm celebrating the holidays with traditions from around the world. The tradition of paroles is a craft activity about Christmas traditions from the Philippines. Students will learn about Filipino Christmas lanterns. And so I have my photo of the Filipino Christmas lantern um, and the kids learning um, to make their own Christmas ornament. And so that's exactly what you see here. I've also mentioned in my overview that coloring sheets and craft materials will be provided. So you can see that coloring sheet, you can see some of the materials. Um, and so, so we see that both of these things match. And I think that that's very important when we build our activity and list it on Activity Hero is that whatever um, we, we write in our activity overview also matches the visual story that we tell in, our, in the activity photos. Um, okay, so on to case study number two. Uh, we have um, our case study is Ola Spanish, who is a provider currently on Activity Hero. And I'll show you how to use available resources to create that visual story. So um, this entails, you know, some photography, some elements, and some stock images that we'll edit together. So this is the activity. Um, these were the, the three pieces of the activity that uh, were listed before. Um, if we look at this without the overview, we can kind of guess it's, it, yes, it's obviously an online activity, um, may, but there's not much else in context that we know of. Um, you know, it could be an activity about animals. It could be an activity meant only for girls. Um, we don't know if it's music or if it's language or if it's, um, you know, just a video. There's not a whole lot um, that, that brings me in as a viewer to understand what this activity might be. So when we build our visual story, um, I would encourage you to think of it like, you know, Airbnb or Zillow. When you look at a house, you, you look at a whole bunch of pictures because you want to feel like you're there. You are shopping around to see the entire story of the house, just like we're shopping around to see the entire story of the activity. Um, so first, uh, to assess what types, was there a question? Okay. Uh, first, to assess what types of photos we'll need for our visual story, um, I, took, I took a look at the overview. So in the overview, I've highlighted a few things that stood out to me that are easy to, to create as an image. Uh, first, this activity is for three to five years old. Um, every class begins with our mascot, Paulina the parrot, and I think Paulina the parrot was really something that drew me into understanding this activity because that's unique. Um, and we wanna celebrate everybody's uniqueness. Everybody has you know, a different type of activity, no matter what the subject matter is, the way that you teach it um, and the way that you put together the activity is always unique. So to find these things, such as Paulina the parrot, and understand how we can incorporate them into our visual story is very important. Um, other than that, some other things to highlight in our overview are that um, they'll be singing songs, there are dances, crafts, games, and conversation. So if we looked back at these photos, you know, we, I realized that this is Paulina the parrot, but the, the crafts, the conversation, the dancing, the songs, they really weren't there yet. Um, so these were the opportunities that we found in assessing um, the overview. So going back to refresh what these guidelines are for the visual storytelling is, you know, we want to create the what, how, who, and where. Um, we'll remember to stay consistent. 
uh, I'll show you what formula we've built to, to create the images for this specific activity. And of course, we will keep it simple. Uh, so first, um, you know, we discovered Paulina the parrot as something unique to this specific class. And she um, answers kind of the question of how, since she helps deliver the subject materials. And my technical tip um, in Canva was to take this original photo and adjust it to be a little brighter. Because as we, as we know, we should keep in mind that people are usually looking at these photos on mobile. So I'm gonna go into Canva and here's my original um, Paulina the Parrot photo. For those of you who are not familiar yet with Canva, it is a fantastic online editing um, image creation, asset creation platform. What I really love about it is that it takes, um, you know, all of the design elements that you need in mind and aggregates them into this platform where you have photos, elements, you can add text. If you're making videos, you can add music, all different kinds of things. It's pretty limitless. Um, all you have to do is enter your email address and then you can get a free account, which is really awesome. And I'm going to demo this on a free account so you understand, you know, what, what types of features are available for this platform. Um, but if you don't want to use Canva and you want to use something else, you know, these uh, technical tips are very easily found on other platforms. So we're going to take Paulina. Um, and I'm going to adjust this image to make it a little brighter. And so I'm going to increase the brightness a little bit, but also because she's starting to look a little faded, I'm going to increase the contrast. And now as you see, her yellow is starting to pop a little bit more, which is really, really great. Um, I want this to look enticing with my four-year-old in mind, um, you know, with kids in mind looking at this photo. Um, so I usually also increase the saturation and saturation just gives you a brighter um, color. So as you see, you know, as I increase the saturation, she's getting a little bit more yellow. You can see a little bit more of the light blue. Um, and Feel free to play around with these things. Um, that's how we learn is we discover what works for us when we play around with scale. As you see, you know, sometimes you can go too bright, sometimes you can go too dark. Um, it really just depends on the feel and, and the look of it. So there's no, there's no exact measure for things. Um, kind of like cooking. <laughs> you kind of go with the flow um, and trust your creative juices. But I do this in mind because our original photo was um, you don't, just a little bit dark. So if you have some time and you're able to do this, you can go from this photo to this photo. Um, and this works well, but we don't know exactly what Paulina is doing and we want to add context to her. Um, so after I've edited this photo really quickly by just adjusting the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation, I can build my um, first activity photo or my first activity image by adding um, some elements to produce context. So the element that I'm adding here um, has purpose and I think that that's important to remember when you're starting to like decorate or add elements to your photos is that you want each thing to be purposeful. Um, and that way it will help you convey your story or your message um, and it won't look too busy. It will help keep it simple. So this was a book that um, our provider had mentioned, um, you know, is covered during this class. And so I wanted to show and set a scene where Paulina was you know sharing this book as a material for how how the book is delivered um, this was the original picture of the book and as you see it's a little bit dark you know some of it's not in the greatest shape which is totally fine 
But um, as we know, most books can be found um, on the internet. Uh, we can Google search books and usually their covers are um, you know, scanned in or the original artwork is scanned in and these are things that are pretty license free to use um, because a lot of places, you know, like Amazon list books and things like that. So we were able to take the, um, the Google searched image of this book rather than using the photo. Um, and this goes back, this paradigm goes back to the assessment of like how much time and resources do I have to make this? Um, am I gonna try to take photos of my books or can I just do a quick Google search and find um, an even better version that's you know, probably the original artwork or su something super clean that I can just add to my graphic? So we're gonna take this guy and we're gonna add context to what Paulina is going to teach. And I could stop there, but I'm gonna add um, some color to make this really pop and also to start to build my formula for, for consistency purposes. So I'm gonna click here and as you see, my background um, is highlighted. So that means I'm changing the behind the picture, this color right here. Um, and what I can do is, oops, I can pick a bright color that complements what you see in the photos. So bright colors, um, as we know, will help draw your eye to the photo. When looking at this on mobile, this will obviously pop a little bit more. It will help tell that story. We understand now that there's a context of, you know, there's some sort of puppet that is gonna teach us online um, and he's probably gonna teach us colors in Spanish. So in just one photo, we're starting to really set a scene. And now we want to ask the next question, which is what? So, um, you know, while one picture will do, we want to encourage you to think about creating multiple photos or adding multiple photos to your activity to really round out that story. Um, again, mo it's because most people will like to click through that carousel. They'll like to look at all the photos, all the angles, hopefully get a notion visually of what the entire activity entails. So our next question we're answering is what, which is a photo of the products and, um, and then also the context. But um, as a technical tip, um, you know, you wanna frame your low res images by you know, just blowing them up or cropping them really close. You're gonna get a super blurry image and then nobody really gets um, you know, anything from that. You're, you're not able to convey your story very well. It's not very interesting to the viewer. So I'll show you in Canva again. We'll pop over here. And this was our original photo we had to begin with. Um, so the, this is a photo of two worksheets that are part of this activity. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the photo to crop it. And most um, editing platforms will allow you to crop. Again, you can still use your phone, which is pretty easy and limits the editing on your desktop. I usually do cropping in on my phone as well because um, it's really easy. And then as you see now, we're just gonna focus on one page because while we have a photo of two pages, you can start to get the idea that probably a coloring page or an activity page or multiple of them are going to be included in this activity. So it's efficient that we choose one and focus on it as, as the feature of, of this image. Now it's pretty dark, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna adjust it just like I did with Paulina. I'll increase the brightness or it's getting a little brighter. I get to see more of this stuff in the worksheet. I'm gonna increase the contrast so that the black stands out more from the white. 
And as you see, there's a pretty big green shadow that's cast on half of this um, worksheet. So instead of increasing the saturation, which would make the green brighter, I will decrease the saturation and it will make this piece of image look like it's more black and white and gray, which is what I want. Um, you know, the point is again that we want to convey that part of the subject material is we're going to use, um, you know, a coloring sheet or a worksheet. So here it is. I cropped it. I adjusted it and now I'm going to go back and use my same formula as I did from my first. So my formula was that I had a big photo, which was my feature. I helped add context to it and then I added a background. So here's my big photo. I will enlarge it, keeping that mobile um, view in mind. I will add a background, bam. And then for context, um, you know, some people might not know what Dia de los Muertos is um, or, or whatnot. So I'm gonna add some context. And this is where the magic of Canva comes in. Um, it's such a great platform because you can click over here and you can add elements, which are these little graphics. Um, so, you know, I can pick a graphic. That suits me. This one looks great. It looks like it matches, you know, my, my Dio de los Huertos um, skeletons, they're dancing. So now I have this idea that like, oh, there's dancing or music involved. And maybe um, because it's a Spanish course and most people, you know, maybe don't speak Spanish that are looking at this, I can add in, you know, what this is. So this is um, music, music. Maybe I'll do it um, in Spanish as well, but adding a couple touches of elements help give this entire visual context. And now as I look at this, I think, okay, if somebody were to visit my activity, um, you know, first they would see Paulina. She's obviously going to teach me something about colors. Also included in this activity is probably something with coloring and music. So now we're getting this full rounded experience of other things that are happening um, in our activity to draw our user in. Um, so here it is, I guess I use, we used a, <laughs> a guitar, but all these things, you know, you can easily switch out, play with it. Um, the important thing is that you have fun, that it doesn't take too much time, um, and that it helps you attain your goal, which is to really tell your story. Lastly, um, we want to feature a kid, of course. Um, we want to show what age this, this activity is appropriate for. Uh, and this is where, um, you know, the paradigm of stock photos kind of comes into play. It's super great and, and more preferable if you're able to take photos of your participants, um, whether that be, you know, a screenshot of them on the Zoom call. I know a lot of people have done that before, um, or them actually in person do the activity. Um, but what we want to keep in mind is that when we're creating our visual story, we want to help immerse the viewer in what the activity is. And in order to do that, um, when you take your photo, it really conveys a lot of emotion. When I took my photo of my niece doing the craft, you know, you got a lot out of the photo because it felt like you were there with her, you saw how old she was, you know, her happiness, what exactly she was doing. And that's really custom to my experience taking her photo. But when you use a stock image, they are, typically designed um, to be more generic. So, you know, it's easy to find stock photos of kid happy or kid taking virtual class. And we've seen a million of those where it's a kid but sitting in front of a computer smiling. But we all know, um, since we've, we've been in our pandemic environment for several months now, you know, what our kids look like in front of a computer. 
um, that image doesn't specifically sell your activity anymore. And it's a stock image because, you know, it's a generic feeling that, that conveys something, but it doesn't immerse the viewer in your experience. So I would encourage you to really think about that and only use stock images when necessary, like very sparingly. Um, you know, each of your activities is unique, whether, you know, it's math or science or art, um, whatever the subject matter is, it's unique because you teach it and we want to empower you to really display that. Um, and the overuse of those stock photos really doesn't help that messaging, um, you know, altogether. But in this case, in, in our use case for limited resources um, and using what's available, we, we did need a kid to explain, um, you know, that there's like a virtual dance party that also happens in our activity. So um, we found a kid who's at home and who is dancing. He is age appropriate. So he kind of checks all of our boxes, but I don't want to just upload this stock photo. I will go back and use my same formula that I used on my other two images so that it creates a very consistent visual story. So over here, oh, let's find our guy. Here's our guy. We found our stock image. Um, on Canva, you can find a multitude of stock images. Um, these ones that have a little crown are for Canva Pro, which is available for a monthly fee. If you don't want to pay for, you know, a Canva subscription, they have, um, you know, a, a bunch of free stock photos. Again, they're probably very, very used on many platforms, so keep that in mind. Um, but there are some other resources out there if you Google, you know, free stock images, and if you really, really need that one, um, or if you have limited time and resources, you know, that's, that's a good option. But again, we'll go back and use our formula. So here's my kid, he's dancing at home, he's age appropriate. I will double click on him so I can crop him because as you see, there's a lot going on in this photo. And remember, we wanna keep our photos simple. We wanna keep them focused. Um, it is easier to look at something that is focused on mobile than it is to look at this huge scene. And we already know from a little bit that he is in his home, he is dancing. I will make him bigger, push him to the side a little because that's what I did with my other photos. And then again, I will add that background and an element. So I'm going to click on my artboard. I'm gonna select a color, the same color that I used for my other photos. And um, I'm also gonna use you know, another one of these little elements to show that he is dancing as well as these elements. So I'm just gonna copy, I'm gonna paste these on over here. I'm gonna explain he is dancing. Um, I would encourage you to use um, words on your photos very sparingly as well, keeping in mind that they are for, um, you know, keeping in mind you're designing for mobile. Um, but this one helps because it's a language class. So it gives this indication of, you know, what he's doing. We'll add an element. You can change it out. So this is the element that I added earlier. Um, Canva gives you this awesome little thing called magic recommendations. So I would suggest that you pick something from the magic recommendations because it matches your other elements. See how they kind of match and that helps create consistency. So here we go. Um, here's my final image. It explains who um, he's dancing. Uh, obviously because I have two languages here, it's a language class. Um, so there's some sort of activity. And then when we look at our visual story all together, we're finally answering all these questions. We're creating an activity that really explains what it is before you read the overview, and that's what we want. So here's my how, here's my what, and here's my who, and he's obviously at home, so we're gonna answer where in that context as well. 